morning, guys. Hello there. So today we're going to do a day in the life RVing and go through everything to get ready. And stay tuned for the end of the video as well. We're going to go over our plans for the winter fun with you guys. Yeah, we've decided what the plan is for winter and we'll let you guys know later. But let's hit the road. Stop of the day here is to grab some propane. We definitely needed it. We've had quite the cold weather here in BC lately. It was minus eight last night, so we're pretty much out of propane. Gotta get it. Luke's out there getting it now. One thing to remember when you do get propane though is to make sure everything in the RV that's propane related is turned off. So hot water heaters turned off, the fridge is turned off, that type of thing. And also that your propane tank on the outside is switched off as well. How much was the propane fill up? Sticking to forty-five dollars, we were right. Oh, forty-nine, forty-five. We were right on empty, so we're fifty-nine and a half liters. He put in, so a sixty-liter tank. Only ever been as low as fifty-five liters before, but cold weather, we push it to the limits, guys. So next stop was supposed to be to dump the tanks and get some fresh water, but they've closed it on us. Come on, Salmon Arm, what's this about? We used it last year in December, and it definitely wasn't closed, so. That sucks. Luckily, our gray tank and black tank were only probably about half full. And last time we were at Alicia's parents there, I happened to use the garden hose on top of our fresh water. So we're not actually in dire need for it right now. But we wanted to show you guys a video of kind of going through the process of dumping the tanks and how we do it and our little tips and tricks. So I guess stay tuned for that in the future when we find a dump station somewhere else. So we got a few groceries that save on foods in the parking lot. Bit of a bummer we couldn't show you the sandy dump station since it must be closed down for the winter. But sun is shining and we're off to the campsite guys. We're going to use the Sites and Trails BC website and we can check out some of the pictures in advance and look at the camping spots but this one's close to home so we already knew about it luckily. Let's hit the road and take you guys with us. We're gonna go check out down this way. Alrighty, so we found a spot here. Whew. It's in the open. There's no trees around us or anything, but in reality, there's nobody else here, so it really doesn't matter. Nope. And it's in a really good fishing spot. We're right here on the whole beach, so Luke can get some fishing in. I still don't have a fishing license, so I can't fish, but Luke's on a goal to catch trout, so. Yeah, take a few casts here today at least, put a little more effort in. You gotta find worms at some point, but I got a few lures to test out. Another big thing with this campsite though, is that we're right in the open, so it's full sun. No matter which way the sun goes, it's not gonna ever go behind trees and block us off. We're probably right around zero degrees Celsius, I'd imagine right now, it's pretty chilly out, so. A little extra sunshine on the RV goes a long way to keep us warm in the daytime at least. Mm -hmm. It's actually crazy how much of a difference it makes when you're in the shade compared to when you're in the sun. The RV just soaks up all the sun and keeps it nice and well, it keeps it warmer inside so pro tip. <laughs> One of them. We have another pro tip I'll show you later as well to keep your insides a bit better. But... Pretty cold old guys, I'm gonna admit, chillier than I expected. but. I don't have any worms, I don't want to throw any big lures or anything in, so I've got a little wedding band. Kind of looks like a worm type thing, right? I'm going to throw that in, put a little weight on the middle there on a swivel, see if that can get down to the bottom. I bet you it's zero if not a little below zero up in the hillside here right now, so I'm imagining the fish are pretty lethargic too just to add to me not catching stuff. That sounds like an excuse. But we're going to give her our best shot and weather the cold. Get a little fishing in, guys. Yeah, guys, it's actually way too cold out here. I have to go back and grab my toque because I'm going to freeze to death. Much better. Oh my god, there's even ice on the lake, guys. Uh... <sighs> We're calling it quits, guys. Standing on ice. Fishing in this weather with the sun going down. Not my day. We're going inside. We've got the heater set to 70 degrees, so we're doing good though. See what we can get up to tonight. Alicia's making no key tonight. 
Yeah. Alright, so I'm just boiling the potatoes for the gnocchi that I'm going to make for dinner tonight, but it still has a while to boil and it's starting to steam up in here, so I'm having to open a window, which is killing me because it's so cold. I even had to put on my big fuzzy socks to keep warm, but... <sighs> Alright guys, we just played a game of crib before I start making dinner, and holy moly! That sucked for me. I almost got skunked, but I got one point over the skunk line. During that game, in three hands, I got 38 points. So, I had a little bit of a kind of speed burst for a second there, and that kind of made the game a bit hard for Alicia. But, sped it up at least. We're going to get some dinner started because it's almost dark out outside now. And it is getting cold, guys. We're going to have to settle in for a chilly night soon here, too. Boy, the furnace is working overtime, but camping in the winter. Alright guys, so I'm just rolling out and cutting the gnocchis to make the gnocchi dough. It's actually really easy. So I just boiled two russet potatoes and then mashed them up and then added some salt and pepper and an egg and about just over half a cup of flour. You just need to add flour until it starts to become kind of like a more of a dough than mashed potatoes. And then yeah, I'm just rolling them out into little snakes cutting them into little squares and then they'll go into the water and boil for a little while so well on our way here so yeah it's something that's like it looks pretty impressive when you make it but in reality it's really simple to make it's just a little like tedious but it's well worth it in the end and i had mentioned talking about a trick to keep the rv warm earlier what i actually meant was the pipes now that it's getting to freezing temperatures sometimes at night here one trick we're doing to keep the pipes a little warmer at night is opening up all the cabinet doors where all the plumbing is. So just keep them open. Pipes are exposed that way and the air can flow through the RV a bit more. Probably gets it a bit colder in here so the furnace kicks on a bit more, but I'd rather spend a few more dollars on propane than risk blowing pipes this winter. <laughs> Alrighty, so all the gnocchis are here chopped up and they're just in layers here to help them not stick. I'm just gonna cover the top with some more tinfoil, it's just what we have right on hand now, but just so they don't air out too much. And now, we're gonna cook some butternut squash to begin the cooking process here. I've already got some bacon cooked and chopped up, and also some Brussels sprouts that are kind of like parboiled and cut in half, oops, <laughs> and some red onions ready to cook as well. So I'm gonna cook the butternut squash in some of this garlic butter, and it's also going to be pretty much the sauce for the whole dish here as well. And these are gonna take a while, so we'll just let them sit here. All right, the squash is done here. Next, I'm just going to sear up the Brussels sprouts in the same butter and also the red onions. All right, and now time to cook the gnocchis. So I'm going to put these in as quickly as possible because they literally only need like one, maybe two minutes. As soon as they start floating to the top, then they're done. Alright, so that made quite a bit of gnocchi there, so we'll save half for lunch tomorrow and the other half is going in the frying pan with that garlic butter and getting a little crispy. Alright, and dinner is served. Ooh. It looks so good. Thank you, Alicia. Another delicious RV meal as always. So, we also mentioned at the start of this video that we were going to talk about our plans for the winter with you guys here. Mm -hmm. We would love to go to the States and do the snowbirding thing. That's what we wanted to do last year, obviously, but unfortunately this year, we've had a pretty interesting 2019 if you've kind of followed us along our journey and we're kind of out of funds, basically, guys, so if they didn't let us cross the border the first time, it's really not going to look good the second time. Yeah, and we really need to work this winter to be able to save up enough money to be able to do this again in the spring. So that's our main goal here. So we had to find somewhere that we'd be able to work. We had debated on going down to the lower mainland, maybe Vancouver, maybe Vancouver Island, somewhere in the Victoria area and paying pad rent. We probably could find pad rent with full hookups and everything for five, maybe six hundred dollars a month, plus utilities. But then we'd have to ride the RV out in the winter, and 
I gotta admit, this thing so far, it's not that insulated. We've been going through a lot of propane and we get pretty cold drafts. And running the propane heater and everything actually makes a lot of moisture in here. So it's been super humid in here, so. Which is really bad for the RV, actually. It can collect a lot of moisture in the walls and whatever and create a lot of mold in the RV, too, which we really don't want to be wrecking this RV. We kind of want to take as good of care as we can of it. That's what we were thinking, at least. So we're looking like we're going to put the RV in storage over winter. We can stay in Salmon Arm and kind of look into some work. We plan on doing one more big kind of hoorah going down to the lower mainland and back visiting our friend coming up pretty soon here. But that's kind of where we're at right now, guys. So the RV will be in storage, but we will still be putting up content. Um, mm -hmm. It might go down to one day a week instead of two, just because if I'm working full time, I can't really be editing full time as well. But we will have some really cool footage. We want to go ice fishing, possibly snowshoeing and or skiing. Mm -hmm. um also we're looking to do some kind of mini renovations on the rv hopefully some reupholstering is something that i really 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 want to do so still some rv content coming up and still some cool canadian winter footage as well yeah a bit of a canadian winter maybe some of the possibly bigger ski hills in the area check out once kind of a few things like that so canada vlogs mixed in with rv content still we're going to kind of make this RV feel a bit more homey for next year because next spring slash summer we're trying to make some big plans for you guys here maybe give us a few suggestions down below but we're thinking Alaska up to Denali Park then maybe down over back into Canada to Jasper and through the Yukon in Canada we wanted to do Jasper this year and when we did the across Canada trip and we didn't get to so that would be a cool northern loop maybe some southern loops down through California and over through Texas we got a whole bunch of plans we want to make and do little loops and kind of travel in the summer again. So save up and do some Canada stuff this winter. And then once spring hits, back on the road, guys. So we're just going to eat our dinner here and then pull our slide in because there's actually a lot of cold air getting in through the kind of seal around the slide. So we're going to pull that in and get ready for tonight. Hopefully we don't freeze to death. Yeah, it's definitely getting chilly. So taking the slide is a little bit extra insulation. And we'll see what we can do, guys. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Night. <laughs>